Understanding what happens during a conflict can help us to avoid the situations with students and understanding what happens for ourselves. In a conflict situation, the person, oh, we're talking about students here, come with negative experiences. Now those experiences can be real or perceived. It doesn't matter. If their perception is negative, then that's their reality. Those experiences then determine what they think, so their thoughts about that particular experience, and those thoughts will determine their feelings. Their feelings then will drive their behaviour. So how they feel will determine how they act. If that negative behaviour provokes a reaction in the teacher, then we will have a conflict. So if the teacher reacts rather than responds, that's when we have a conflict. And that then again reinforces the negative experience. So think about this in terms of a student. If they have negative experiences in maths, they were late to maths and got into trouble, they were asked a question they didn't know the answer to, the other kids made fun of them, or they got into trouble from the teacher, their thoughts then about maths may be, I hate maths, I'm dumb at maths, the teacher hates me, the other kids hate me. Then their feelings could be shame, embarrassment, resentment, anger. That will then drive their behaviour, which could look like withdrawal, refusal to do work, being rude to the teacher, and even walking out of the classroom. If that behaviour then gets a reaction from the teacher, we get a conflict and that the this, this cycle continues. If we know that this is the situation, if we know that a student has negative perception of our class or of us, then it's our responsibility to do something here proactively to change that situation.